Hello everyone, welcome to this uh, new tutorial. In last week's video we analyzed the seismic susceptibility of Spain using six variables and in the end uh, using a sum of all the variables we made a representation that gave rise to the result we have uh, here on the screen. And for this week we will create a slightly more careful representation using the AHP method uh, called analytic character process. The objective I want to achieve when using the AHP method is, give, uh, is to give different weights to our six variables. That is, I want the most important variables to have a greater weight in the final calculation for the final analysis of our map. This method is extremely interesting because it allows us to make a direct comparison between all the variables. That is, each variable will be compared with another variable. And then, with our critical sense, we will give different values depending on their level of importance. After having almost done a battle between all the variables, we will calculate the average of the results, which will give us, in percentage, the weight that each one will have in the final analysis. Let's start by uh, removing this map and clicking right here on Add Data. We will now import the six uh, normalized variables uh, as we saw in the last video. So uh, uh, these are the ones with the prefix RC and just click on OK to import. So here we have our six variables ready. And what we are going to do now is uh, minimize the screen in our project and open uh, this Excel file, which will be in the link in the description so you can use it. Let's wait a second for it to open. Okay, um, as we can see here in this Excel file, we already have our six variables represented, both in column A and in row number one. And now what we are going to make is uh, to do a comparison uh, between each one. For example, comparing the cell uh, A2 with the cell C2, the cell A2 with cell D2, cell A2 with E2, and then depending on the degree of strength that we assume for all this comparison, we will place the values of the scale that we have here on the right side. I'm going to give a quick example here. Let's imagine that relatively to the column, that is relatively to the earthquake depth, the fault distance, uh, distance is extremely more important. So in this case, we will put uh, the value number nine. Let's delete this value and start filling the table. So we can start with uh, the first row, so the fault distance. And if we compare the fault distance, for example, with the earthquake depth, I believe that uh, the fault distance is relatively to the row. So the column in this case, the earthquake depth, is moderately more important. So we can place, for example, 1 divided by 3. Then if we compare the fault distance with uh, the seismic wave speed, I believe that the uh, fault distance is, for example, relative to the column, so relatively to the, the seismic wave speed, is equally important. So in this case I will place, for example, the value 2. Then fault distance with density of faults, we can place, for example, uh, 1 divided by 4, so in this case the column is uh, moderately more important. Then earth, uh, earthquake's magnitude, we can place uh, 1 divided by 6, because I believe that the earthquake's magnitude is uh, much more important, or more important in this case. And to finish, the earthquake density, I believe it's uh, important as well. So, for example, we can place uh, 1 divided by 3, so moderately more important. Then, if we do a comparison between the earthquake depth and the other variables, for example, 
earthquake depth with seismic wave speed. In my opinion, the earthquake depth is, uh, for example, much more important. So I will put the, the value number six. Comparing the earthquake depth with the density of faults, I believe that the depth is more important. So I will place the value number three. Uh, now for the earthquake magnitude, I believe that the earthquake magnitude is more important. I will put, for example, one divided by two. And to finish, uh, in my opinion, the earthquake density is, let me see, for example, it's much more important. So I'll place, for example, the value number five. Now let's do this for the seismic wave speed. So we need to fill uh, three cells. Comparing the seismic wave speed with density of faults, I believe that the density of faults is much more important. So I'll put uh, one divided by six. Uh, the earthquake magnitude, in my opinion, is extremely more important. So I will place the, the value one divided by eight. And to finish the earthquake density is moderately more important. So I will put the value one divided by four. Now we just need to do the comparison for the last two variables. So let's start with the density of faults. So comparing density of fault with the earthquake's magnitude, uh, the earthquake's magnitude is more important. So it's actually moderately more important. I will place the one divided by four. And uh, the density of faults is, in my opinion, moderately more important than the, the earthquake density. Now to finish, we need to, to compare the earthquake's magnitude with the earthquake's density. And uh, in my opinion, relatively to the, to the column, the row variable is much more important. So I will place the number six. Now that we finished to fill the first table right here on the on the second one, we need to be sure that this sum is always one. And right here we have the average that we are going to use as weights on our raster calculator formulas. For example, so the, the earthquake's magnitudes have a weight of 46%, the depth of 23%, uh, density of faults 15%, um, earthquake's density uh, 9%, Fault distance five uh, percent, and to finish the seismic wave speed, will have only a, a weight or a ponderation of three percent. Now let's uh, put this Excel file uh, side by side with uh, with our ArcGIS Pro project, so we can use these percentages in the raster calculator. So let's go to analysis. Actually, let me fix this column first right here on Excel so it can be easier uh, to, to view the, the percentages. And so we, we, can, we can know to each variable we are, we are doing the analysis. And right here you go to analysis, then more tools. I think it's, yeah, it's this one, okay. Click on more tools and then search for raster calculator. Click on this one. And now we need to start with the fault distance. So we double click on this, on this one. Then we need to multiply by 5%. So in this case, 0 0.05. Let me place the operator right here. Uh, close and uh, I missed uh, the open parenthesis. Okay, then we do a sum and we choose the second the second variable in this case the depth. So double click on depth, and then we need to multiply by twenty three percent. So in this case uh, zero point twenty three. Close parenthesis once again. Then we do a sum and we need to do this to, to the six variables. Now it's the seismic wave speed. It's only 
so it's 0 0.03 then sum and density of density of folds okay um, okay the first one I put on the formula it's not the density of folds but the folds distance because so I need to, to change that so let me just finish this one let me multiply it by 15% and then this one right here we need to change it because they are the same so let me delete this one and replace it by the RC e defaults it's this one okay let me do a sum of the earthquakes magnitude so let's select the earthquakes magnitude multiply it by 0 0.46 Close parenthesis plus operator once again open parenthesis and let me place it the earthquakes density the last one and multiply it by the nine percent okay so 0 0.09 close parenthesis let me now change the output I will save it in my folder I will call it for example HP underscore earthquakes let me see if okay no we need to to remove some characters let me put quicks okay now here on environments we need to say that the coordinates are the same as current map um, for the extent it needs to be the shape file of Spain so in this case we don't have it on our project we need to to search to search for it um, it's 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 this one right here click OK and now we just need to place the mask and as well the mask is not on the project we need to search for it it's this one mask and uh, the snap raster is the mask as well so we need to to search for it once again okay and now we just need to click on run there we go let's see the result let me just uh, delete these these rasters right here and let me also uh, close the Excel file and now let me just change the, the the color ramp and let's do a quick analysis of our result so let me just change this color ramp and we can see that we have the higher values of susceptibility right here on the um, on the south southeast of of Spain, as well as right here on uh, on the middle uh, near the Pyrenees as well, and uh, right here on on the north northwest of of the country. Thank you for watching. If you like this type of content, don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment what you want to learn next.